So when you get a new set of rotor blades, you'll slide the rotor system, rotor blade into the straps. And you want to make sure that when you do that, that the straps are not binding and trying to be spread open either way. So <clears throat> what we do is we get a level on a bench like this. We slide the blade in. This pad goes on the top and on a blades that are uh, like the 30 foot rotor system, the eight and a half, there'll be a pad on each side of the blade. On the uh, seven inch cord blades, there'll be no extra pad. What you do is you'll run the blade in between the uh, two retention straps. Uh, you push the bolts from the bottom to the top. You can use a drift pin to help align. Do not pound them through. You want to rotate them. You don't want to wreck the threads. And we put our um, cotter pins in line like this and centrifugally so they're pushing this direction. You'll use a torque wrench to tighten it down to the proper values. And you can work from the root outboard to tighten it up. You wouldn't tighten here and then here. You'd go here, here, and here, and here to tighten it up. These rotor blades are designed so that you don't have to string the blades when you assemble them. When you get these from the factory, do not remove these fasteners. Just plug the blades in. There's an, a B and a B on the end, a B on the end of the blade, and an A, uh, A on the end of the hub bar, and an A on the end of the rotor blade. And make sure you put the A and B correct. Then, if you wanted to check stringing, you put a string from one end of the blade in the center in the same place. You'd run all the way through, and that's what this dot is for in the center of the pitch block. This is the pitch block. And all the way to the other end. If the, each blade tip is slightly up, then the string will run right through the center as long as you have it in the same place each way. Because of the urethane damper that's right here, and there's a spherical heim joint inside this hub bar, the blades will find their true position by themselves. On a fixed pitch set of rotor blades, where the hub bar is, uh, doesn't have this device, then if you loosen these straps, you could throw out your lead and lag in the rotor blade. What we do then is run a string from the face of the hub bar all the way to the other end, and the blade should be swept back approximately one quarter of an inch to a half inch swept back and each blade should be swept evenly and then you string through the center to each end. Now let's we'll talk about uh, cord wise adjustment. This blade runs on this barrel right here, this block, and this is between the towers. So if we tighten this side and loosen this side, the whole rotor blade then will rotate like this and like that. So this is where the tracking is done and we do pitch the blades here, this is preset for performance. If you were to change performance, which you should not have to, if you did, that means that you would move this one to the bottom and the bottom one on this side to the top, so diagonally they're switched. The same stack stays in. You would only do one side at a time and then you would retrack it with the block. Before we ship each rotor blade, we actually balance it on a bench like this. And the blades are teetering freely. And I can see me move it here. And we've got two parallels right here. And we actually jack this in position and are able to check the blades. And we use a water level at each end. So right now, I have the water level right here um, pumped up. And where this water level is located. It's a tube that goes from end to end with a fluid filled inside of it. And then we're able to maybe put it in the same place on each side. And the blade should be exactly there. Now let's say that your blades were out of balance. You remove the forward screw, back it out, and you then put a piece of lead in there. But before you would do that, you could lay it right on there and then you would, the blades would be either in balance or out of balance. You can see this little piece of lead throws it way out of balance. And if I knock that off, because the blades are in balance, and you have to wait a little bit, even anybody, anybody even walking by would cause the blades to move. So you want no wind blowing in your shop. Now we do this at the factory. This is a way you can check your own blades. You would take a bolt like you see it, and that bolt then uh, can move freely and teeter freely on two parallels that are hardened. And what we have here is then it's the same at both ends exactly. And it checks your balance statically. 
you want to make sure that you Loctite these two screws right here with blue Loctite. And you don't want to plug the space that's around it. It's a little bit on the tips of the threads and run it in. It's also a breather for the air cavities inside the rotor blades. You want to make sure that you don't use too much Loctite so you don't plug up this area. To check on it, you could put your mouth around this and blow inside and let go and you can hear the air pressure blow out of there and you know that's proper. So don't use too much Loctite to lock those screws. Make sure you use a driver that fits in there perfectly. From the factory, they are Loctited in place. In your tracking tab kit, there's your little reflector and here is a piece of the tape. We simply fold it in half and then we fold it again like this and like this. And this creates the holder for the reflector. So we take the tape and we stick it on and so you end up with a T-shape, two edges stuck to here and one down. And that's how it goes on, just like that. And then this reflector goes on the outside, not between it, on the outside end. And I'll attach this right on here like so. And push it down firm. And there it is. Now you can see that then from the cockpit. you can see one's high and one's low. A little darker in the day, you can see it better. So you've got a situation where what, red high or white high gives the adjustment and measuring it with a dial indicator. So with the dial indicator on here, it goes to the center and you can pick this up at, at any tool store. They should sell this, a dial indicator and a mag base. I'm clamping it on the hub bar. The blades can teeter freely because we're on the center of the teeter bolt or just off to one side. Now when I make an adjustment, the blade rotates this way, you tighten this side, loosen this side, that's going to draw this up. The block, the block stays with the towers and then the blade is rotating. This will give you a measurable amount on a big blade like this. If you see one inch, big blade meaning this is a 30 foot blade, and if you see one inch out at the tip, it's ten thousandths of an inch adjustment to be able to adjust that. Ten thousandths total. So you'll tighten this side, you'll loosen this side, you simply can put end wrenches on and reach underneath and hold it and give it tension. And move, I move approximately about a flat or two and loosen the other side and make sure you're snug. You can also check it with a torque wrench to make sure you're at proper values. So 10 thousandths on a 30 foot blade, on a 25 foot rotor, you'd see a 5 thousandths adjustment, 5 thousandths of an inch. That's just that much of an adjustment for every one inch of out of track that you are. The adjustment barrel that's in here and the spool that's here, you want them to make contact and you don't want the blade to have any end play. On this bearing system or even a washer system, thrust bearing or thrust washer, you want to make sure there's only maximum of one or one and a half thousandths of play in that area. This system allows you to adjust it completely where there's no play at all. The finish on these rotor blades need to be waxed and I would use any kind of wax that, like a mother's cleaner wax, or a wax that prevents bugs from sticking. And this is a very tough, durable finish. But you can see the bugs on this rotor blade. A little water here, wipe them down. You can see they come off really easy because they've been waxed. So you want to make sure that your rotor system is always clean and free of debris and bugs for best performance.